It's indisputable that scale has one of the greatest ramifications for cartographic generalization. This image is really cool because what it shows you is uh, the impact that scale has on the space you have to create your map. If you look at this white grid, let's pretend that this is your map at 1 to 10,000. At 1 to 25,000, you see an exponential decrease in the amount of area that you would have to map. Here you can see that um, you'd only have this light gray area. At 1 to 50,000, another exponential decrease. And then all the way down to 1 to 200,000. So map when, that you originally had at 1 to 10,000, if it was reduced to 1 to 200,000, you'd have to fit everything on your map that's in this area into that area. And it necessitates cartographic generalization. There's an interesting chart that Borden Dent created that kind of sums up how generalization, scale, and the amount of area that you're mapping all tie together. It's definitely worth memorizing this chart. Map scale. If you have a large map scale, you'll have a small mapped earth area, more information detail, and less generalization. If you have a small map scale, for example, one to two million, you'll have a larger mapped area, less information detail, and more generalization will be required. So one type of generalization that I think is obvious is data selection, elimination, and classification of your data. This is data model generalization. Essentially what you're doing is you're eliminating data that might be too detailed for what you're trying to communicate. That's not what this lecture is interested in, but really this deals with uh, querying certain data and eliminating it before you even start to visualize it. But there are a lot of geometric types of generalization and gra uh, graphic generalization that are really useful. And we're going to review those ones right now. To start, we have simplification. Simplification is selectively reducing the number of points required to represent an object. You see this all the time in GIS. You import a shape file, and it's comprised of a million little points all the way around a lake, for example. Not all those points are necessary, and particularly if you have a small scale map. So what you can do is you can simply eliminate most of those points and still have a, a fairly detailed representation of the data. It makes it look less choppy, it makes it easier to compute, and often it makes it, makes it more appropriate for the right scale. You can see the difference. There's no real difference in the end result, but there's a major difference in the level of detail. This is really easy to do in ArcGIS as well as QGIS, um, but in ArcGIS you'll find it in the Arc Toolbox, and if you go to the Cartography Tools Generalization, you can simply decide whether you're simplifying a building, a line, or a polygon. I'm not exactly sure how simplifying a building is different than simplifying a polygon, but you can explore that on your own. Smoothing is another method of geometric generalization. Smoothing is different from simplification. If you look at this line, let's pretend that this is a creek running through your neighborhood. It's kind of geometric and doesn't look really natural, does it? It was probably collected when someone went down the creek, walking down it in galoshes or something, and collected GPS waypoints. GPS waypoints are very accurate, but they don't really mimic the nature of what's being mapped. Simplification, or sorry, smoothing, would be curving this to make it look more like the feature it's representing. So if this were a creek, these lines would probably be better suited for showing its route. Smoothing is used all the time. So we often use simplification to eliminate nodes first, but then if you want to make a map look more organic or look proper at the right scale, or actually just often look friendlier, we can use smoothing, for example, on this map where you see those white circles. Smoothing is used to just kind of add some curvature and make the border of the U.S. look less uh, sharp and jagged. Borders are actually very jagged oftentimes. They follow uh, you know, certain rules, latitude, longitude, etc. Smoothing can be found in the same place in the ArcGIS ArcMap toolbox 
under generalization, smooth line, smooth polygon. Merging, grouping or clustering of complicated line features. Let's pretend that this is a map of a railroad yard. Now, if you're mapping a map, if you're creating a map specifically of a railroad yard, this level of detail is probably very useful. So you don't have, you know, railroad cars running into each other and blowing up. Uh, but if the, the railroad yard is just on your map, maybe a reference map for tourists, it might be uh, easier and less distracting if you generalized it. Merging is grouping or clustering complicated line features into simpler ones so they're not distracting and they don't demand so much of one's attention in the visual hierarchy. In ArcGIS you can merge divided roads and you can use this feature to do other sorts of line merging. Amalgamation. If nothing else that's a fun word to say. Amalgamation is the grouping of individual aerial features into larger elements. Here we have a bunch of lakes. It's probably northern Minnesota or something. Most of them are probably ponds full of mosquitoes, but I digress. Here we have a representation of the same area, but we've amalgamated the smaller lakes into larger ones. This is really useful, again, if the level of detail is not necessary for the scale of your map, or if it's tangential to the information you're trying to communicate because if you have too much detail, it will distract from your primary message. The map on the right is less distracting and better focuses map readers' attentions on particular lakes. It can also be very useful for islands. For example, fires in Greece. Well, the fires are kind of cute, but the main point here is that the islands are amalgamated. Amalgamation in ArcGIS is typically called aggregation, and you'll see that a lot where proprietary software where it uses slightly different terms, georeferencing versus uh, georectifying, but same idea. You can aggregate points, you can aggregate polygons. Collapse. Collapse is replacing an object's physical details with a symbol representing the object. This is the city of Hastings. Minnesota, with Falcon University, you've got individual buildings here, you've got the city outline, and a regional airport where you can see the runways. This would be collapsing. At, this, at a smaller scale, you would not have, or at a larger scale, excuse me, see, I made the mistake too. At a larger scale, you wouldn't have the space to do that, so instead you um, uh, collapse. Hastings becomes a big circle. Um, university, no buildings, but uh, some weird flag thing there. And the airport becomes an airport symbol. Refinement. Refinement is simply selecting specific portions of an object to represent the entire object. Here we have rivers. Lots of rivers. Too many rivers. Um, now we have fewer rivers. We're refining what we want people to look at. So this is probably every river in the watershed, and it does look like the Mississippi, and I think it's the Missouri are, you know, made thicker, which makes them pop out a little. But if that's not the point, we can refine by selecting specific portions that we want to keep and getting rid of everything else. No offense, it looks like the cartographer did kind of a, a hackneyed job here. That cartographer was me. I apologize. Another example here uh, of refinement. A lot of rivers and roads are left off of this map. Just the important ones are kept there. Aggregation. Aggregation is different than amalgamation uh, in the sense that you're grouping point locations and representing them as aerial objects. So, uh, I, as we saw, Ezra uses this term instead of amalgamation. It doesn't really differentiate between the two, but in cartography we do. So, it's kind of the idea of seeing the forest for the trees, right? You have a bunch of trees, but that's actually distracting. That level of detail isn't needed. So, you create a polygon representing where the woods are. You see this all the time, for example, the, uh, the forest here on the USGS topographic map. There we go, aggregate points. Exaggeration. This is important. Too often I think we get fixated on, you know, detail, detail, but sometimes it, it makes communication less effective. So to amplify a specific portion of an object, we can exaggerate it. And, of course, you want to make sure that you maintain 
factual integrity, but accuracy and integrity are different. So this helps people see the channel. If this map were reproduced in its original format, it might get smudged, it might, it might end up looking like Pinto Lake, but now we make sure that it will be noticed that that's a bay. Enhancement, elevating, the, uh, elevating something in the visual hierarchy to make things clearer. Typical example is adding a bridge symbol around a street line going over a river. Uh, this is actually under cartographic refinement in the toolbox. And you can see create overpass, create underpass. Displacement, separating objects so that they don't overlap. Now, this is another issue where accuracy may not be perfect, but as you can see, it makes it much e easier to read and less confusing if you show that the creek and the bike trail do not completely abut one another. This map I use as a real life example of where this can backfire. Uh, we were hiking in the state park and it looks like the trail is definitely, you know, it's been displaced from the river and there'd been some flooding, but nothing major. So we went down there and started hiking and we were eventually in the river and we should have turned back, but we decided, ah, oh, we'll push through. It looks like it widens up down here. And my colleague broke his ankle and we had to haul him out and medevac. It was a nightmare. So you want to be careful with your displacement. And obviously you want to be careful when hiking that if a river is flooded, don't just march through, just turn around. Displacement is possible in ArcGIS as well. Uh, you can detect graphic conflicts and do a bunch of fun things with these tools under graphic conflicts. In sum, the generalization process is pretty straightforward. Every method, piece of generalization should be done to enhance the purpose of your map. So always keep that first and foremost in mind. Always choose an adequate scale to represent that. Select data that are right for the scale so that gets back to the data model uh, tweaking. Make sure the data are consistent. Reduce, simplify, or eliminate visual clutter that does not help your map's purpose. And that's really important. And remember that there are tons of different generalization techniques. And generalization is not only OK, it's, it's crucial for effective communication. And good generalization is what separates professional cartography from amateur. I hope you've learned something. And feel free to watch it until <laughs> you figure it out. Thanks for listening.